In this video, jump into Xactimate with me and learn how to write up a full roof replacement, starting now. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe. Now, let's do an estimate for a full roof replacement. And we're just going to keep it as simple as possible, basic, run-of-the-mill, run middle-of-the-road, regular old house, it's fine in middle America. So again, we're gonna start off with our first note here, right? So the following line items are to replace the roof on the, the dwelling damaged by hail, something like that, right? But we're also gonna add a note in here to talk about depreciation because as an insurance payments, you know, necessarily when we, we're talking about a full replacement of something, not just a repair where we're taking little pieces of things here and there, or only doing part of something, which is we consider to be a repair. When we do a full replacement, we, do, we replace the whole thing. Like we're gonna replace the whole roof. We're gonna place the whole side of one side of the house. We're gonna place all the siding on the, on the whole house. That's most insurance companies, most policies are gonna have you depreciate. So we'll say depreciation is, and this is, you can make templates and macros on this so you don't have to type it every single time. I'm just doing this for a demonstration. Based on the age and condition of the item being replaced. The roof is, we'll say it's 10 years old, has a 25 year useful lifespan and is in average condition. And then we're gonna show our, our calculation here, basically 10 out of 25 is 40%, right? So 40% depreciation, pretty sure it's 40%. Depreciation withheld, right? You're gonna have explained, somebody's gonna have explained this to the homeowner, what the depreciation is and how this works. So when they get this paperwork and they're looking at it, they're like, oh, okay, this is what he was talking about with the depreciation. Get access to my professional network as a fast track certified grad, and let's get your career started. Not in 90 days, not in six months, but right now. To learn more and get signed up, visit adjustertv.com slash certify. Just want to make a couple of comments about these notes because this is something that is absolutely critical. And if you're taking the fast track to deployment certification program, you're going to be graded heavily on this. This is one of the key things um, that's going to be on the, the final. Um, what you're trying to do here, when, when you're thinking about these notes, it's not like, oh, well, it's just required or Matt says I got to do it. What you're trying to do is you're trying to communicate uh, with the homeowner in the simplest, fastest, clearest way possible, right? What, a, what? A, so, so when they're looking at instead of a bunch of gobbledygook with line items and like you know numbers and calculations and unit price and RCV and all this stuff, they want to see this. What, what are you doing? Where are you doing it? Right. So, what am I doing? I'm going to replace the roof. Where am I doing it? On the house, the dwelling. Why? Because of hail. And now we're gonna briefly explain why we're paying in two payments, right? So this is what depreciation basically is. Um, depreciation, this is the definition of depreciation or, or, or how it's calculated um, based on the age and, and condition, right? So the condition is, is important, right? So we wanna say, so we, we've established what, you know, the the the, how it's calculated now let's see let's explain let's show and explain how that this particular roof this homeowner's particular house how this fits into that definition right so we, we we define it right here and then we go on and say specifically your roof it's 10 years old um this particular roof has a 25 year useful lifespan and it is an average condition for a roof of this of a ten year old roof. It looks like it's a ten year old real, a ten year old roof should look right. So we're going to hold back forty percent depreciation until you have the work completed. Once the work's done, just have, you know send in the final bill from the contractor. We'll send you the rest of the money. Pay that guy off. You're all done. Right. That's the conversation you should have had with the homeowner. You can if you print these out on site or you have your laptop there and you write on site. You can go through that spiel with the homeowner. But in this case. What we're doing here is we're saying the roof is 10 years old, right? That's the age. Um, the shingles, this is how we get the 40%, it has a 25 year useful lifespan, so a three tab shingle. Um, and then the condition, which is average. There are situations where you're gonna make it above or below average condition. You're never gonna say, 
uh, anything other than the, those three things, one of those three things. It's either average condition, above average condition, or below average condition. If it's if it's and these are gentle ways of saying either your roof is in terrible shape, um, or that you know the roof is in such good shape that you know there should be less depreciation withheld or whatever it is, right? So it might be like think of a classic car. Right, or a 15-year-old car could be in above average condition because the paint's brand new, the upholstery looks nice, it sounds good when it runs, right? So that'd be an above average condition. So it would be worth, it wouldn't be depreciated as much, if that makes sense, right? So, but this is all we wanna say in this note. I don't want to, I don't wanna say, you know, add a bunch of things on here, like uh, it's depreciating at 6.67% a year. You know, or add in a bunch of extra things that are not relevant, that are that are not adding to the understanding of the home that the homeowner is going to have of what you're doing here. All they need to know is what is what are you doing with depreciation? How does my roof fit into this? And what's the number? That's it, right? And then of course, what are these line items? We're replacing the roof. Where on the house? Why damaged by hail? Okay. That's for for the vast majority of your F nine notes. That's all you need to put in there. In fact. That should be all you need to put in there for every single one of these line items I'm about to drop in here, so, right? So we want to tear off the roof, right? So roofing, arm V, tear off hall and dispose of comp shingles. You're not gonna put dumpsters, pickup trucks or dump trucks on any roofing thing because you're gonna, the, the, the disposal, the haul off is included, right? And we're just gonna like make up measurements here, right? So the tear off, the actual, it's a 24 square roof, right? It's all labor, okay? And that includes tearing off the vents, tearing off the ridge cap, tearing off the starter strip, you know, tearing the um, valley out of there and everything, okay? Contrary to what the internet may say, that is the way it has always been and it's the way it should always be, probably, right? So roofing, it's a 25-year shingle, so that's 240S. We don't wanna include felt on there because we're gonna do something different with it. Um, and we want to make the action replace only, right? So we tore off the felt and the shingles. This should include felt. Let me double check that, stand by. Yep, yeah. remove composition shingles and felt, okay? So double check that if you're, if you're if in doubt, if you have a little brain fart like I just did. So. The roof is actually 24 squares. We're gonna say it's a straight gable, right? We we'll keep it super duper simple. The easiest way to, to do this, to add, because you wanna add waste to this, this is why we're separating the felt out. Um, you don't apply waste to felt, right? So um, what I usually do is 24, you know, and hold down shift and hit the eight key for the ampers or the asterisk, um, which is the multiplication, right? So 24 times 1.1. So 10%, okay, makes sense. And then 26.67, I wonder if that rounded that up for me. Yeah, probably did. Okay, now I need to put the felt in there. So roofing, felt 15, which the vast majority of roofing applications, actually for anything over 10 years old, maybe even, not quite 10 years old, maybe five to seven, eight, 10, nine, 10 years old, they're gonna be, anything older than that's gonna be a 15 pound felt. Anything newer than that's probably gonna be synthetic. But for this, for this particular thing, we're gonna say it's felt, right? So we have the actual 24, uh, 24 squares of felt on there, right? So we tear off the shingles and the felt, the actual, squares that exist on the house. This is the actual square footage of the roof, right? 2,400 square feet, but roofing is expressed in squares, which is, you know, move the decimal point over a couple spots. And then we're gonna go back on with the shingles, but we have to add waste to the shingles because of, you know, the edges and valleys and things like that, right? And we don't include felt in there because felt is not subject to waste. There's no waste on felt, okay? That's a basic rough estimate, like as, as basic as you can get. 10,350 bucks for a 24 square three tab roof is crazy. <laughs> That's so high. Well, this is also Kalispell pricing, so this is 
Maybe things are high here. Okay, but we're not quite done because there's other things on the roof that need to go on there, right? So we, we definitely want to put vents back on. Um, there's little trim and flashing pieces and things like that that we need to take into consideration. So the next thing that should go into your estimate here are going to be your vents, right? So we'll say that there's six turtle vents, vent T in their metal, right? And we're going to tab over to ACT, which is action. And that says, and I'm going to hold down the shift key and just hit the plus um, button. And it's automatically going to change that for me. You can tap, you can arrow through those. You can click right here. And, you know, old school, if, if you're kind of old school person and you just like to click everything, um, I'm going to tab through these fields as much as possible, right? You can tab through everything and you can change everything by just starting to type, right? So you had six vents, right? If I want to change the, from the dwelling to other structures, I can make sure that this little thing is highlighted and arrow up and down, right? Those are little shortcuts for you. So we got some vents, we have some uh, pipe jacks, FL pipe plus, these again, these are plus. And let's say that there's three of those I've seen houses that have 15 and 20 of those on one, like not very big house, which I don't know how that works, but they must be vents for other things. Um, and then we'll have drip edge. Drip. And we're gonna make sure that that is also replace only, right? So the plus means replace, minus means remove, ampersand means remove and replace, material only, install only, which you don't use that often, which you occasionally. So you're going to have to have added this up unless you get an eagle view or whatever, or you've got sketch in there and it does it for you. We added it up and it's going to be 316 linear feet, right? That's, that's a pretty basic roof right there. We'll say it's not steep. Um, it's not high, so we don't need to add that stuff on there. It doesn't have any other, you know, ridge vent um, or high profile ridge or anything like that. Um, but you know what it does, you know, we're looking at, I'm looking back down at my sketch here and I see, oh, well, it looks like it has a, um, satellite dish on there that the, the contractor, the installers are going to have to address. They can't just like put the shingles on around it. Thankfully there is ELS special systems dish RRS R yeah, dish RS. That's it. Um, detach and reset satellite, digital satellite system. Excludes receiver recalibration, all that kind of stuff. Detach and reset a satellite dish. Restall on site. Detach a satellite, digital satellite dish. Reinstall at a later time, et cetera. No life expectancy data. So they, the contractor sometimes would try to throw in like a receiver recalibration, dish alignment, that kind of thing. That's something that dish is going to do or um, uh, whatever. I can't remember the name of the other. Whoever does satellite TV stuff, um, those are the ones who do the, uh, the the recalibration. The homeowner might do it. Contractor's not going to do it. Um, if they're super nice and you know they might and they know how to do it, they might do it. If you've got like a Elon Musk Starlink thing, that thing it, it calibrates itself. It's got motor in it. I have got one. It, I just I hit the calibrate button and it, I can hear it up there on the roof. Comes zzz, and it, does, it did it on its own. So you don't need to add a recalibration. So there's your there's your roof. Now notice we didn't put any um, dumpster on there but we're missing depreciation, all right? So what did we say? In our note, we said we had um, depreciation of 10 year old roof, it's 40 years, 40% 40 depreciation, right? Fastest way to do this is, why did I go all the way down there? The fastest way to do this is to select the first one and the last line item, click on global changes, and then you're gonna go to you can change all kinds of things in here, by the way. You're going to go to depreciation, and you can do this one of two ways. You can go by percent. So we could just say it's 40%, right? Hit OK. OK. And then it's going to show all this depreciation over here. The other way is we could, and it's really six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. It might change the depreciation a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be by a whole lot. We can depreciate by age and condition in here. You have to click this do not change age checkbox for some reason. I don't know why that's there. And say that it's 10 years old. 
do not change the condition. It's going to default to average, right? Depreciation type, do not change. We want it to be recoverable. Hit OK. Let's see what it does. So 3,436,210. Let's see what it does. 3,545,150. So I changed it a little bit. I think when it's all said and done, the bottom line number is going to be about the same. $12,000 rough. Okay. So the next thing that we do here, this is, and that's it. That's really all you need to put in your, your rough estimate, um, unless there's extra added things. And this is, this is the basic rough again. I'm going to go to documents, reports. Definitely need to resequence the line num numbers. Preview. And take a look at this sucker. So I'm making sure in here I'm looking at this. I got everything spelled right. It looks grammatically correct for the most part. Um, sometimes if you have a macro, um, and I can show you this, I'll show you this here in just a second, you might have like, um, the roof is, and I'll put in my macro, a bunch of X's right there so that I can see it and I know to change it. If I forget to do that, then it'll show up in here as a bunch of X's. Um, I want to make sure that depreciation here, I, that I'm showing that I'm taking depreciation, and I'm also showing I'm taking depreciation here as well. Right? Nothing else weird is going on. I'm just double checking my work. Right? Still don't have my de deductible in there. Let's add a deductible real quick. Coverages and loss. Deductible, $1,000, right? So I might have in my uh, macro, it might say, this is what I was talking about a second ago. I might say this. Because those are big targets, I can just like jump in here and just double click that and go 10, right? And then cl double click this and go 40 and then hit close. And then I'm done, right? So that way I can always have a, a custom note. Most of the typing is done. Real quick, before we move on, I want to show you a little trick. Um, when you do have a sketch, delete all this, right? My dwelling is here, right? So you can add line items to your roof. This is the, I just drew, it's just the fastest possible, just basic roof here, right? You can start adding your line items onto your roof here, right? You can hit start typing in things like, you know, felt, and it'll give you a bunch of felt things and you can like drag those and put them on the roof. I still think the fastest way and the safest way to do this because if you don't do it, what, what can happen, let's just put it this way. What can happen is, is that sometimes you can, place a line item outside of the actual building itself and it'll sh it won't show up under the roof. It'll show up under its own thing in the grouping tree and it looks weird and it kind of messes things up and makes things confusing. I don't want to have to mess around with that happening, having to undo it, fix it, go back, delete, redo, blah, blah, blah. So I'm always going to, whenever I have a sketch um, in Xactimate, I'm going to be writing my estimate from the estimate items uh, area in Xactimate. I think it makes it the simplest and the safest, right? So again, got that first note, right? Following line items, et cetera, okay? I'm gonna build a macro, you know what? Let's, let me delete that actually. I have macros made already that are designed to be dropped right onto your dwelling, right onto your sketch, okay? So I'm gonna hit Control M, and it's gonna bring up my all my macros that I have in here currently. And I'm gonna start typing 240, because that's the one I want, which is, I, I named my 25 year comp shingle macro 240. Make it super easy. Double click it, and it's gonna drop in all these line items, right? The cool thing is, is that I made this macro so that in the calculation field, it puts in a sort of a shortcut, right? So you see right there, it says SQ times 1.15, right? That's the number of squares that are, that are on this sketch times 15%, you know, and adding 15% back to itself. 
right? So I don't have to do anything with that. Tear off, don't have to do anything because it's, it's the squares, right? Drip edge, don't have to do anything with that because it's the rakes and the eaves, right? The rakes and the eaves are the, um, the, 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 the where the gutter attaches is the eave edge and where the fascia on the, like a, well, there's fascia on the eave edges, there's fascia on both, but on the, the ends that were the, the rakes were the, 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 basically what goes along with the rafter, that's the rake, right? So now this is the rake plus E for that whole diagram, okay? Um, and it goes for several other things in here, including um, continuous ridge vent, um, ridge cap, um, steep and high, um, and then valleys, right? So in valley metal is gonna be, th the shortcut for that is VAL. So there should be zero valleys on this one, and there are, all right? So all you do when you get a macro like this, and you're like, just dropping your macro on, all right, I know that none of this stuff is on here. Up to there, that's none of that's there, all right? Definitely has none of that, none of that. The turtle vents are metal, there's no ice and water, it's only drip edge, and delete those. And there's my estimate, right? And all I really have to do from here is to say, all right, there were six turtle vents and there were three pipe jack boots. Now I'm done. That's it. That's all I got to do, right? So that's that's a pretty cool little shortcut right there for those sorts of things, and it's in macros. And those macros, you can find those macros under the Xactimate X1 complete estimate walkthrough video that's in inside of Adjuster TV Plus. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty cool. And again, I, I still think macros are probably the fastest way to write estimates, pretty much bar none. And that is how you do a basic roof replacement. Find out how you can get free access to my complete online course on how to become a highly paid independent insurance adjuster right here.